back. Sick of 365 Radio, 365 Sports. Christian McCollum, Irish Sports Daily, joins us now. And, and play action pools. And we'll talk about that at the end, end of the segment. We're doing uh, some pretty exciting stuff with the, with you guys, Christian, uh, this year on our website when it comes to pick them and uh, survivor pools and things like that uh, that people uh, will be able to get involved with um, you know, through the channel and through uh, the website. But uh, let's talk about... Notre Dame's quarterback decision. Tyler Buckner is the guy. Uh, is that expected? Uh, how confident should Irish fans be about their quarterback moving forward? Yeah, Tyler Buckner was always the odds-on favorite to win this job. Um, since he, you know, he really was spliced in. Um, they had a lot of packages for him last year when they were uh, Jack Cohn was the starter. Um, Drew Pine was technically the backup quarterback and did some great things when he came in against Wisconsin and Cincinnati. Uh, but Tyler Buckner had enough of a package and showcased enough last season um, as that kind of running threat quarterback um, that, you know, Notre Dame fans were very, very excited about his potential. Uh, so coming into the spring, it was considered he was the one that had the leg up in the competition. They went through the competition in the spring. They went into fall camp. Um, and, you know, like you said, Marcus Freeman announced it last week. Wasn't a surprise at all to anybody. Uh, Drew Pine being the starter would have been a surprise. But that being said, Drew Pine is a very, very capable backup quarterback. I think he's still very underrated. As for Buckner, like I said, he's a tremendous athlete. Right? He, he was one of the uh, a premier lacrosse recruit early in his high school career uh, until he really transitioned to football. Um, so he's an exciting runner. We've seen that. There's no doubt about it. The question is, can he be consistent as a passer? Didn't always show that last year. And I can tell you right now, uh, September 3rd in the horseshoe, uh, the Ohio State and Jim Knowles and those guys, they're going to they're gonna force him uh, to prove that he's going to be a consistent passer. So we'll see. We'll see if he can be. Uh, I know Tommy Reese and Marcus Freeman, they're ready for it. They, they know that that's what's going to happen. So I'm sure they're going to uh, game plan for it. And, and I think, uh, you know, they, they, they're they putting the best guy out there that they can help win games. Um, so we'll see. It's definitely exciting, but also a little, you know, kind of hold on to the edge of your seat. What do you expect from that offense this year? I mean, uh, Jack Cohn last year came in and did did very well. I think probably even exceeded expectations at times uh, for what people thought from him. And uh, you know, he was a veteran. He was an experienced veteran kind of a guy. This is all new. Is it going to be kind of the same as it was last year, or do they have new wrinkles for, for the new quarterback? Yeah, there'll be a lot of new wrinkles. Jack Cohn, like you said, he had a great first game. Then he was really, really kind of underwhelming the next few games. And Notre Dame fans were calling for him to be bench. And he was taking a lot of sacks. Um, but the thing that would happen was they'd get into a two-minute offense, and he'd look great. So about midway through the season, Tommy Reese and those guys, they changed it up. And they said, let's just get the ball out of his hand um, as quick as possible. And once they did that, he kind of took back off. Um, yeah, the, the offense should be quite different now with an athlete like Buckner back there. So they're definitely going to mix in a lot of quarterback runs. Um, he's going to be a threat. Even if, you know, you say Ohio State, they're going to make him, you know, prove they can, he can pass. Well, you know, he, they're also going to have to respect the run, right? So read option, everything, you know, him rolling out, everything. He's, going to, you're, he's the kind of quarterback where you'll, you're probably going to need a spy on at some point. Um, and the kind of guy that, you know, third and long, things break down, he'll be able to pick it up with his legs. Uh, so, but in addition to him, you know, having to prove it as a passer, Notre Dame has, has suffered a lot of injuries at the receiver position. Um, they had Avery Davis go down uh, just last week. He would have been a six-year senior loss for the season, um, a true leader in that room, you know, not just in the room, the entire team. So the, the receivers are going to be a question mark. They have Lorenzo Styles. Uh, he's going to be kind of asked to lead the way. Brayden Lindsay's another experienced receiver. They're going to be looking for some young guys like Jaden Thomas and Deion Colby to step up. But the one guy that's really, really popped this uh, fall camp is the freshman Tobias Merriweather. How much can you ask for a freshman right away? Uh, probably not a whole lot, but this kid is different. I know a lot of people think, you know, he's just a tall, maybe just a tall, fast receiver. He's not just a tall, fast receiver. He's a tall, fast receiver who can run routes and has superior ball skills. So at some point, he will be a playmaker for Notre Dame. Will that be this season? Will that be early in this season? Maybe later in his career? Um, I don't know, but we're going to find out. And, and Tyler Buckner is going to need some help from that receiver position. Obviously, at tight end, Michael Mayer is one of the best tight ends in the country, if not the best tight end in the entire country. So expect him to get a lot of targets. 
So this is a team that, that loses Brian Kelly, although, uh, you know, when you hear both parties talk about it, they were both kind of ready to, to move on. Uh, and, you know, Marcus Freeman has youth, energy, and all that. They're still picked fifth uh, in both polls or fifth or sixth to start the year. So there are high expectations there. Is there anything that would lead you to believe that this team is not uh, deserving of a top five or ten ranking? Yeah, I mean, deserving of the preseason rankings are always kind of like you know, how much it's dubious. Yeah, on, yeah, how much did he based off last year? So, in, in terms of do they deserve it going into the season? I mean, I guess you can see that. But if you're asking me, do I do I think there's a good chance they finish way beyond behind that in the final poll? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, they have a relatively easy schedule, but they have three huge games. We mentioned like the game in Columbus to start off. I mean, they're fourteen and a half point underdogs. So, you know, how often is a top five preseason team two touchdowns underdog in the open? You know, then they have, you know, they, they're going to play Clemson. They play Clemson at home in November. Uh, but, you know, depending on how things shake out and how things go with Clemson, you know, Notre Dame, that could be a pick em, or Notre Dame could be an underdog there. Um, USC under Lincoln Riley now uh, with Caleb Williams and Jordan and Addison out there. They, they closed the season out in L.A. So they could be underdogs in that game. Um, you know, this Potential three loss on the schedule. I mean, you know, a nine and three Notre Dame team is obviously not going to be, you know, in the top 10, 15 in the country. So, um, yeah, if, if there's some growing pains at quarterback, if they're, you know, not able to, to pick off at least one or maybe two of those three games, um, you know, I, I think you definitely see them, you know, fall way behind those expectations. Uh- Christian, Marcus Freeman has injected a lot of energy. Like, not that Brian Kelly, you know, built a, a fantastic program. He's the all-time winning as coach. But it was to a point where they probably needed some energy in there. He's a lot, injected a lot of energy into it. There's a lot of, you know, look at their you – know, the recruiting is is going really well. What do you would you say is the biggest change you've seen in this short time that Marcus Freeman's been a, a head coach? So, uh, a lot of the times I- I'm dealing a lot with recruits and recruits' families. And I've dealt with a lot of recruits, probably dozens of recruits that visited Notre Dame last fall or even last summer that have continuously been recruited by the new regime, if you want to call them that, even though most of them are there. Everybody that I've talked to has talked about a new vibe. There's a new vibe there. You mentioned the word energy, Paul. They say energy as well. And, and a lot of people just say people want to be there more. So it, it, it starts at the top, right? Marcus Freeman is the one that's kind of injecting that to them. But the players are feeding off of it, and giving it back to each other, giving it back to the coaching staff, and giving it back to recruits. You know, visiting recruits. That's one of the key things when, when recruits visit schools is, you know, how do the guys like it? How do they get along? How do they like the coaching staff? And that's been overwhelmingly positive. I mean, it, it, the thing about Marcus Freeman, and I've noticed this through, you know, covering him and covering recruiting, he's genuine. He's that guy. He's not pretending to be that guy who cares about people, who really, really wants to be in there with the players. He is that guy. And so players, they know that he's real about that, and they all feed off it. Now, let's see how it translates to, you know, on the field at some point, you're going to have to win games. But I get, I usually get nervous when Notre Dame has an a opener like this because, obviously, Notre Dame is independent. So when they lose one game, you know, they're kind of only playing for national championships. You lose a game – you're kind of, you know, working against it. It's going to be hard to get there. A little bit easier now with the playoff, obviously. Uh, but in years past, losing a game or two early, the season's over. And, and, and you see it. You, they'll fall apart. Look what happened with Kelly in 2016. But with Marcus Freeman there, you know, if they if they have an underwhelming performance in Columbus, I, this team's not going to quit out Marcus Freeman. They're not going to say, okay, that's it, we're done. Uh, they're going to keep battling, keep battling. I expect this team, regardless of how they, you know, end the season or finish, I expect them to get better and better and better as the season goes on. There, you know, obviously we're, you know, in the, the realignment era in college football uh, with everything that's gone on. And there is so much attention on what's Notre Dame going to do. Jack Swarbrick, I know, had the Q&A um, last week or the week before about, you know, kind of where he's pointing towards, you know, um, what they're doing in the future. Uh, what would be the which would be kind of, a, I guess, a doomsday scenario for what they've done. But what would be the doomsday scenario where you see they would just say, we're going in, we're, we're going to join the Big Ten, we're going to join a league, or, um, you know, we're going to join the ACC because we just appreciate all their support over the years. Yeah, so I, I don't think they're going to join the ACC. Because <laughs> I, I think that, uh, 
if they have to join a conference, I'm not sure uh, how how viable the ACC is going to be long term in that scenario. Um, and, and Jack Silvis always kind of laid out the you know the criteria they need to stay independent. Uh, they need to have a good home for their Olympic sports. I don't think ACC is quite ideal for it, but at the same time, I was, the Big Ten is going to let them have their Olympic sports there without football. Um, so they're kind of okay there. They also need a TV deal. Obviously, where NBC uh, signed in part of that Big Ten package earlier this week, that kind of helps Notre Dame. You know, it's, there's a lead in. NBC can have college football Saturday now. It's almost like a brand beyond Notre Dame, which will help them. So, you know, expect them to, to feel comfortable with the, the NBC relationship they have moving forward. But they need a path to the playoff, right? If they're, if they're shut out of the playoff, if the Big Ten and the SEC or whoever else joins up, you know, does not have a, an option for Notre Dame to go in the playoff, that's when Notre Dame will have to join a conference. So initially you think, well, if you're the Big Ten SEC and you want Notre Dame in it, you just say, well, you're out. Of course, the SEC knows that if Notre Dame has to join a conference, it's most likely going to be the Big Ten. So the SEC, expect the SEC to fight to keep Notre Dame alive in that scenario, whatever playoff scenarios they come up with, the SEC is going to want an independent Notre Dame um, to be to be part of that because if they don't, it's going to be Notre Dame the Big Ten. So, so how long is that tug of war between the Big Ten and the SEC um, going to last? I think that's really the, the one thing that can change it. Yeah, I, I often think about Notre Dame and people say, well, you know, they only make so much money from their TV deal, but one, they don't have to share it. And two, mm -hmm. uh, they might make less than a conference would on a deal, uh, but probably not that much less, but uh, and probably more than most conferences. But what they're also buying by not having that is total autonomy. I mean, they, they, yep. they could go in and make twice as much in the, in the Big Ten, but then they – they are not as powerful as they once were. They're just part of the machine. And Jack Swarbrick, who I think is the third most powerful guy in college football, you know, becomes just another AD. 100%. And, and you know, recruiting is the lifeblood of all these programs. And one thing, you know, you talk to kids all the time, what do you know about Notre Dame? Um, one thing that always pops up is they're on TV every week. They're on national TV every week. I'm in Washington, state of Washington, you know, speaking of Tobias Merriweather. He's from Washington. I know his family very well. One of the things that allowed Notre Dame to get in the door there, regardless of what happens, they know they'll be able to see Notre Dame on NBC. They're going to watch them wherever they are. You go to a conference and, you know, Notre Dame plays Marshall game too. You think Notre Dame Marshall as part of the Big Ten, is that going to be a nationally broadcast game if they're in a conference? No. <laughs> so, uh, but it will be in September 10th when they're independent. So, so that is definitely something. They, they relish their independence. And it's more than just a status thing. There's a lot of benefits to it, um, financially, brand-wise, um, all that stuff. And, and so Notre Dame is not going to want to give that up easily. But in the end, like I said, if, if they're shut out of the playoff, you know, expect them to find a way to get get into the big time. Christian McCollum, Irish Sports Daily, with us. And Christian, one of the other things uh, you we have partnered with uh, with you on uh, with play action pools and some of the stuff going on. Uh, we are going to do. Uh, and, and remind me here, because uh, I'm in my 40s and sometimes uh, brain thoughts escape me, uh, and so do words. Uh, but some of the things we're going to be doing, like survivor pools, pick all that, uh, that people can get involved in uh, that, that you've set up for us. Yeah, so we're gonna, we got two of each, right? So we got, you know, we know we have, you guys have some NFL listeners, we have some college fans. So we have a pair of, um, you know, contests for each. We have an NFL pick -em contest for you guys, um, and you guys are going to pick the board. Right? So you pick every game each week and that's a spread um, and you'll be able to, you know, see how you do and you'll, you'll count up and whoever has the most wins is going to show out in the end. Um, and then we'll do an NFL survivor contest, some typical rules where you, know, you can only pick the same team once, uh, say when you move on. And then when things will get a little bit more interesting when it comes to college, we'll, we're going to highlight 15 games each week for college. The, the 15 most high profile games, uh, I can promise you that Notre Dame Marshall game I I mentioned earlier, it won't be one of them to get to. Uh, but the 15 games each week that, that are the kind of standout games, you know, you'll have the opportunity to pick those against the spread. And then, and then Paul, me and you came up with this one kind of together, uh, college survivor pool. So it, it'll be a college. You'll, have, you'll be able to choose whatever game you want, but you're going to have to pick against the spread. So we're not going to let you just pick Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State every week. You're going to have to pick against the spread. And unlike an NFL survivor, where you only get to pick the same team once, since you're going against the spread, there's no limitations. So like I said, if you want to pick Alabama every week or Ohio State, be my guest, but you're going to have to give those points 
And if uh, Ohio State Alabama doesn't cover, then consider yourself out. Yeah, I mean, they're like there's teams are going to have 38 to 50 point spreads sometimes. So, uh, yep. yeah, you, they don't hit that, you know, then you're out. So it's going to be fun. Well, Christian, uh, great talking to you as always, and uh, and I'll, I'll reach out next week and make sure we get everything going ready for the contest. But Christian McCollum, Irish Sports Daily, does a great job uh, there in play action pools. Uh, Christian, we'll talk soon. Thanks, Paul. All right, there you go. And uh, yeah, that's our Notre Dame. Uh, pretty interesting what's going on there. And and uh, Craig uh, rejoins us now, and you heard him say it. Path to the playoff. That's the only thing. So all these people saying all this stuff about no 